In this video, we're going to talk about some of the properties that exponents have. So the first thing we're going to look at is product of two exponents. So let's say I have x to the a times x to the b. The rule here is that you actually add the exponents together. So x to the a times x to the b would equal x to the a plus b. Okay. So let's look at what that looks like. And I'll use a different color for when I'm doing examples. Um, so if I had x times x cubed, this would be x to the 3 plus 1 is 4. You don't do anything with the bases. As long as the bases are the same, all you're doing is adding the exponents together, and that's it. Uh, so if I had instead x squared times x to the negative 4, I would say 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. So I have x to the negative 2. If I had x to the fifth times x to the negative 2, 5 plus negative 2 is negative 3. So x to the negative 3. Okay? So that's the pro product property for exponents. For a quotient of exponents, if I have x to the a over x to the b, then this is just going to be subtraction instead. So I'm going to get x to the a minus b. Um, and then if I come over here, ooh, I want to use the same color. Here we go. If I come over here and we do some examples, if I have x to the 7th divided by x to the 4th, this is going to be x to the 7 minus 4 is 3. Again, you don't do anything with the base. All you do is subtract the powers, and that's it. If I have x to the 5th over x to the 10, then this would be x to the 5 minus 10 is negative 5. I can then, if I want to get rid of the negative exponent, I would just write this as 1 over x to the fifth. Okay. Uh, if I had x to the negative 10 divided by x to the 3, this would be negative 10 minus 3 is negative 13. So I'd have x to the negative 13 or 1 over x to the 13. If I had x to the 10 over x to the... Uh, let's say negative 10. Then this would be x to the 10 minus negative 10 is positive 20. So I'd have x to the 20. And if I had x to the negative fifth over x to the negative six, this would be negative five minus negative six is gonna be negative five just plus six, which is x to the one, okay? Or just x. That's quotient rule. Uh, if I continue, uh, onto power of a power. So if I have x to the a all being raised to the b power, this is going to be a product of the powers. This would be x to the a times b. So looking at some examples of that, if I have um, x to the 4 raised to the third, this is 4 times 3 is 12, so I have x to the 12. Again, don't do anything with the base. You never need to do anything with the base here. All you're doing is manipulating the powers, and that's it. If I have x to the third raised to the negative fourth, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, so x to the negative 12, or 1 over x to the 12, whichever uh, you prefer. Um, so that's how you do power of a power. If I do power of a product, so I have x times y all raised to the a, you can just distribute the power to each individual uh, base in here. So this would be x to the a, y to the a. So if I had um, x, y cubed, right? Oops, I should uh, x, y cubed. Then this is just going to be x cubed, y cubed. And number two, you can go the other way as well. Sometimes it's beneficial to be able to say, oh, I see x cubed, y cubed. I'm just going to pull out the three and make it x, y to the cubed, to the third power. Um, what if I had something like negative x, y to the second power? Remember that this negative is really like a negative one. So what I really have here is I have negative one squared x squared y squared. 
okay? So we're not like distributing the negative in here so, or something weird like that. I, I've, I've seen students try to do that before. Um, you're just saying, okay, three things being multiplied, I'm just distributing it to everything inside. So this is just gonna give me negative one squared is positive one, so then I just have x squared, y squared. Um, and that's, that's how you do power over power. If I have power of a quotient, so I have x over y, all raised to the a, it works the exact same way, you just distribute it. This would be x to the a over y to the a. So if I had x over y to the seventh, this is x to the seventh over y to the seventh, okay? Now, we can make these things more complicated if I give instead something like, um, let's say uh, I have 2xy squared all raised to the third power times 4xy cubed divided by y squared. Wow, there's a lot going on here, right? Don't get overwhelmed if you see something like this. Just take it one step at a time and be sure to write out what uh, you know what your new expression is after you've done each individual thing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at this one and I'm going to distribute the three into everything. When I distribute the three to the two, right? Two cubed is eight, so I have eight. Three distributed to the x is just x cubed, and if I have it distributed to the y squared, I have to remember my power of a power because I have y squared to the third. I multiply that and I get y to the sixth. I'm going to do on uh, over here, I'm going to just say y cubed divided by y is y squared because I'm going to use my difference. So I'm going to have 4xy squared. And this is, whole thing is still squared. Now I'm going to put the squared into here. So I'm going to have 8x cubed y to the sixth times 4 squared is 16. And then uh, x to, raised to the second power is x squared y squared squared is, I multiply them, so y to the fourth. And now that I'm here, I can just multiply all of the stuff together. So eight times 16 is 128. x to the third times x squared is x to the fifth, because remember that if I'm multiplying exponents, I add the powers. y to the sixth times y to the fourth is y to the 10th. And I'm done. That's my answer, okay? Um, yeah, so that's how, how you uh, use the properties of exponents. These are the most common ones that are gonna come up. Um, and next time, in the next video, we're gonna look at fractional exponents and how you manipulate those.